Greetings and welcome. Last time I finished my new 20 bicycle tank. But while testing I noticed that its pedal power propulsion isn't very maneuverable. So before further testing I put in an engine. I choose that little Boschless DC electric motor kit. It costs me a little bit more than 100 euros. That thing is advertised with 1800 watts and a voltage of 48 volts. Yeah, I had to replace that original chain sprocket with another one so that I can use a real bicycle chain. For mounting that motor I installed an additional aluminum sheet metal plate with slotted holes for the motor so that I can adjust the chain tension. On the other side there's the gas pedal. Well, that motor did come with a hand grip for the, which I just converted into a pedal one. But wait, before we equip that whole thing with an electric drive unit, first we'll need to know how heavy it already is. So let's lift it up. Without the electric stuff, the new tank weighs already 85 kilos. Yeah, check out my new old mechanical scale. That thing is weighted up to 300 kilos. Let's see what the scale is showing now. After putting in that additional motor, controller stuff and battery, it's 10 kilos heavier, with 95 kilos in total now. Those cheap action cams aren't off anything. You can't even tape them to the outside of your tank track. At least it did record till it shut off. That self pulled gas pedal just works great. Maybe I should add some cover plates, because behind my foot and beneath my feet there's that rotating drive shaft. And on the right hand side the unprotected drive chain from the motor. Let's have a look on the control panel. On the bottom, the main on and off switch, there's even a little indicator lamp which shows the operational readiness. In the middle, the most important switch, which engages the reverse gear. On the top hand side, there's that three position switch, with which I can change between three steps of engine output power. In the back, my old worn out e bike battery. While removing those cables from the battery, I have to be very careful that they won't touch each other, because there's still some stored voltage inside that motor control box. It already happened once that there was a connection. A little bang and spark appeared. Well, I don't want to destroy that cheap Chinese electric control box. For a long time I had that dream to drive on that one specific grassland, which I almost see every day while driving to my stupid workplace. Well, from the distance the weeds doesn't look that tall, but after driving some few meters I realized that that was a stupid idea to come here. The grass is that high that I almost can't see. But the most unpleasant thing are all those insects like grasshoppers which are flying towards me while driving forward. Also, that soft underground and the high grown grass makes it very difficult to steer that thing around in there. Another thing I have to 
keep in focus is that electric motor box, because while driving with such heavy load it becomes quite hot. Don't want to destroy it right away. Yep, it actually happened. One of my tank tracks jumped down. I was very surprised about that. I guess the reeds were tougher than I expected them to be. It's very close. He has to take the wheel. After getting everything back on track, I did a damage report. At least five badly damaged guidance angles. Da vorne die Zacken, die sind ja alle verbogen hier. Guck doch. I managed to bend them back to position, but the metal already did became a bit soft. Anyway, drove again. A little further I had to battle, because that shallow hill was just too much for that weak motor or that weak battery. As you can see, no suitable protection against the elements, grass everywhere. Stupid idea to go full off-road on its first mission. Actually that thing is way better suited for the road. On such a flat surface it just drives almost perfect. Now it comes in handy that I designed it like that. As you can see the outside wheels are higher mounted than the middle one. By doing that the friction contact area on the ground is slightly smaller, which allows to do tight turns while steering. But for that the underground needs to be like a flat road. Just heavenly conditions for a tracked vehicle, I guess. Well, while driving backwards, you have to watch your feet's position first, because those pedals are turning too. You could call it a safety issue. Thanks to the rain recently, everything is still soaked wet. Because of that, my little steering wheels are making quite some nice squeak noises while engaging them, almost like a real tank. Asking what armament or body I will add in the future, I can tell sadly nothing because it's just pointless. It's almost unsteerable. Also, more stuff, more right. Actually, the whole project was about figuring out if you can build a real fully tracked vehicle with bicycle wheels. Well, it's possible, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's just stupid, but fun to ride. Don't. That's all. Dear.